collect the build. Graham Krizik, uh, from CEO and founder of Voltage from Kansas, USA. Kansas is the most central state of all 48 contiguous United States of America. It is about the same distance from the Atlantic and the Pacific Ocean. Is it difficult to find fresh seafood in your neighborhood? No. Not everyone understands house music. It's a spiritual thing, a body thing, a soul thing. These are the famous lyrics from Eddie Amador's song House Music in 1997. Do you understand house music? Yes. The Ansoft Matrix, often called the Product Market Expansion Grid, is a 2x2 framework developed by applied mathematician and business manager H. Igor Ansoff in 1957. It is used by management teams to help to plan, evaluate growth initiatives and conceptualize the level of risk associated with different growth strategies. Is choosing for a diversification strategy of entering a new market with a new product, a product risky in this space? Yes. Will the pay-per-use model be one of the keys for mainstream lightning adoption? No. The Big Lebowski is a 1998 black comedy crime movie written, produced and directed by the Kuhn brothers. Did you visit the Lebowski Fest as annual festival that began in 2002 in Louisville, Kentucky, celebrating the cult film? No. Is Satoshi Nakamoto the second most important person in world history? Yes. The Ozarks is a physiographic region in northern Arkansas and southern Missouri. The area is known as the U.S. Interior Highlands and cover 120,000 square kilometer. Is this the place to be to practice your favorite hobbies, skiing, hiking and chilling at the lake? Yes. I prefer IPA, Indian Pale Ale beers from Dogfish Head Brewery over Evil Twin Brewery. Yes. The Arrowhead Stadium serves at, uh, as the home venue of the, the Kansas City Chiefs of the National Football League NFL. It has a seating capacity of more than 75,000, making it the 27th largest stadium in the United States and the 6th largest NFL stadium. Do you watch every home game from your favorite team at the stadium? No. Are you Satoshi Nakamoto? No. Welcome to the Connected World Weekly Podcast. I'm Edward. And I'm Steph. We are ready to take you with us into the beautiful world of the Lightning Network. Enjoy, Enjoy the, the ride. ride. And this is episode 28 of Connected World. Steph, how are you doing this time? I'm good, man. How are you, Edward? Nice. Yeah, I'm also good. Well, uh, yeah, busy weekend again, Yeah, <laughs> as always. But I'm uh, back uh, in uh, the world of the living. Well, yeah, are you <laughs> sure? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> again, again, weddings and uh, wedding hangover and, uh, well, uh, yeah, work, work, work. But nice. Uh, were, busy were, with the nice stuff. You were backstage <laughs> at the DJ booth? because yeah oh, uh, every, two times <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh man i think you uh yeah yeah and uh till till really late so uh we uh, we were um cleaning up with uh together with the dj so <laughs> that's ah, that's late yeah, yeah clo <laughs> closing up the party yeah and it's <laughs> in interesting to see how djs um uh perform and uh and they're always nice people uh and they're in for a laugh and uh yeah uh, great music. Yeah, you're both at work, right? So uh, indeed, yeah, yeah. That's that's really what what I like. All all the people that are working for uh, for the party, for the people, also the the venue. That's mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's a nice uh, am ambience. Yeah, yeah, man. And you? <laughs> what did uh, you do? Yeah, what should I say, Edward? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we're doing Changing diapers. Okay. It's, yeah, it's it's okay. It's doable. I mean, uh, <laughs> we brought our uh, oldest son to my mother uh, this weekend, so uh, that oh, we that's could, nice. Uh, yeah, so we uh, yeah we uh, came out late uh, um, uh, uh, Sunday morning. We uh, um, yeah, so I think we were we we were lying in bed until 
10 in the morning or something. Oh, but, that's uh, nice. Yeah, for we, once. We <laughs> really needed it. Yeah, and yeah. obviously we had to uh, to feed my uh, my youngest every uh, three, three to three and a half hours. Yeah, so it but it's still... more bearable if you can yeah. sleep uh, through 10. <laughs> yeah, so it was, uh, yeah, it was a pretty nice weekend. So uh, Nice. Hey, Edward, yeah. We, um, yeah, we um, added uh, the um, uh, the Telegram bot for the podcasting 2.0. Uh, yeah, I saw indeed. Edward. Yeah, uh, there uh, was someone who asked for it, and then I thought, why isn't it working? And it was um, well, we had it in place, so it, it was possible to listen to it on podcasting 2.0. Mm-hmm. But the boostergrams, they're really nice to to have it in the in the, yeah inside the group. Yeah. And uh, I think it's fun because then uh, people can choose for themselves, um, donate something uh, through, uh, and through leave a, a message. really nice... Yeah, and leave a message. I mean, everybody can see it. Yeah. So that's uh, great. Yeah. Yeah, nice. <laughs> it, it, and, and that's really Edward. lightning, right? Uh, yeah, value yeah. for value. That's yeah. uh, great. Yeah, yeah. And, and we also are um, sending up our, uh, a note for the Connect yeah. the World podcast because Indeed. obviously we all have our own notes, but yeah. we are um, building the note for uh, Connect the World so we yeah. can uh, yeah, just keep track, um, even more keep track of, uh, of all the, um, the sets that are flowing into our, yeah. uh, um, in, into our wallet. So, a real um, separate one, so that's nice. If uh, someone wants to open a channel, we will uh, post it one day. Yeah. And, uh, we will then, share uh, the pub key. Yeah. And I saw we, we go with, with, with Raspberry Blitz for now, but yeah. BTC yeah. Pay server was also one yeah, of the Yeah, because options. it's so reliable and so mm-hmm. stable. Uh, so perhaps we're uh, going to try them both and then choose later. But um, yeah, yeah. Um, it's the nice to try Blitz a different, is... different one because I'm, I'm using Umbra now, so yeah. it's nice to yeah, try for one. me too. Uh, yeah, yeah. So nice. And and talking about notes, at what yeah. who's the guest Looking of today? Looking forward to yeah. this one. Uh, this week uh, we have uh, Graham, uh, and Graham is the CEO of Voltage, and uh, that's a really uh, interesting company. Uh, following them uh, a long time now. So, uh, yeah, great. Uh, heard a couple of uh, Twitter spaces also. Yeah. And uh, I think it's, uh, it's a nice, uh, nice guest. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, nice, Edward. And um, well, that obviously <laughs> will be in the second part of the podcast. Indeed. First, we have to talk a little bit about the statistics of the Lightning Network and about our Rings of Fire community. So yeah. uh, let's do that That first. one was really on fire. So yeah. <laughs> enjoy the <laughs> <Indeed>. ride. <laughs> enjoy. <laughs> Conecta el mundo. Yeah, and on fire it was, Edward, because last week we had a little over uh, 33.13 Bitcoin pushed into the Lightning Network, and this week it's yeah. 34.31. Um, uh, um, so we added 1.2 uh, Bitcoin, so one, yeah, a little, yeah. A little less, yeah, one, uh, 118 million Satoshis, with Amazing. around 1,198 members participating in over 154 rings. So yeah, crazy man. I don't know what what, what was the yeah. record again. I I forgot, but uh, well, a one point two Bitcoin um, seems like uh, yeah. yeah. Gr- because it was due to uh, to uh, some uh, large uh, liquidity rings. Yeah, and, and I remember we had one uh, half Bitcoin uh, ring. Yeah, that was also that the was, crazy, crazy. Yeah, but I think that. this is more. I think it's more because we had a, lo- a couple of uh, smaller ones. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I I think in the end it's more. Well, nice, and right? we're now at block height 700,039, no, 739,463, that's it. <laughs> and the Lightning Network as a whole, uh, 59 nodes more than last week. So it's now uh, up to uh, 17,000 almost. And uh, I see here 24 and a half Bitcoin more than last week. Uh, 3,940 Bitcoin inside the network. Nice. nice. And indeed. today, 1 million Satoshis is getting you $299, 279 euros, and 1991 Chinese won. Connect o mundo. And the news of this week. Uh, start off with uh, Kraken, uh, because last month uh, Kraken announced lighting integration. Prayer uh, Rochard tweeted about it. Uh, now also being available on Kraken Pro Mobile. So that's even better because we're all using mobile. So uh, check it out in the show notes, the announcement. And then uh, GetMesh. I'm really bullish about this um, uh, company. GetMesh makes it easy for users to spend with an integrated uh, wallet and makes it possible to monetize your content. And of course, we're content creators, so we like it. 
uh, in a video on Twitter, Jake from GetMash shows how the plugin exactly works and uh, how to use it. And uh, there's a lot of uh, things uh, possible, uh, like for instance, uh, donating uh, Satoshis when scrolling down uh, in an article or something. Uh, a lot of possibilities. So there's a video on Loom uh, and it's also in the show notes. And then um, how do I say it? Uh, Rapego? Rapego, so, right? Yeah, I think yeah. so. <laughs> you talked to uh, to them, right? Yeah, to Clayton. Yeah, man. Um, yeah. yeah, he participated nice in. Of, uh, yeah, I think his, his name. Is, yeah, his, his Telegram handle is Clayton. So I, Clayton. Uh, yeah, I, okay. I guess his name is Clayton or something like yeah. that. But um, yeah, he's um, a uh, a member of our Satoshi Radio Rings of Fire community, and he's uh, Great. obviously uh, from uh, Repego, and um, he participated in uh, in some rings because he uh, needed some inbound liquidity. Yeah, for for this project also. So was he um, a ringleader also or not? Uh, no, no, just participating. Okay. But I think he will be a future ringleader for sure. Nice. Next time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Repego uh, offer a simple ways to use the Lightning Network to receive Bitcoin payments, and now also for WooCommerce. So everybody with uh, WordPress uh, and then WooCommerce um, uh, installed, um, they show their uh, new payment light Lightning uh, payment gateway for WooCommerce in action on their website, and with an example I saw, uh, yeah. it's a website where you can uh, buy some things. Uh, so it's nice that um, that they build that. And then uh, Blab Lightning integration in the news of episode twenty five, we mentioned uh, an announcement uh, of Blab adding Lightning support. Um, and Blab is a Bitcoin exchange for those who don't know it, uh, and a product of Bitonic and Bit. Um, a Bitcoin company founded in two, 2012 in the Netherlands and they posted a behind the scenes video on Twitter to get a feeling uh, how it will work. So check it out. And then uh, Voltage, uh, we have Graham in this show. Uh, Voltage added LM bits um, to their uh, dashboard. So uh, for those who don't know Voltage or LN Bits, at Voltage you're able to run a Lightning node in the cloud and with LN Bits, users can easily leverage the LN Bits APIs, manage Lightning accounts and gain advanced functionality like LN URL uh, for static invoicing. And now it's possible to deploy LN Bits dashboard beside uh, your node to add more advanced capabilities. There were numerous requests for this, a feature to be added so it's great for uh, users that uh, have a note there and then um, there uh, you know balance of satoshis right yeah, steph yeah, you're yeah. running it i'm running uh, it too no i'm not no? oh yeah i'm running yeah, it yeah, yes, yeah of, yes, course, of course of course Sorry. with the, with oh, the yeah. telegram bots right yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, uh, I, I was i was confusing it with wallet of satoshi but um yeah balance of satoshi obviously yeah Indeed, and well, um, installing it uh, for uh, most users was getting easier because you uh, could run Lightning Shell and uh, Balance of Satoshis is also a part of Lightning Shell or in, inside Lightning Shell. It's a, a great script um, made by uh, Alex Bosworth and a must have to use for managing your L&D uh, node channel balances and much more. Uh, also with the Telegram bot, for example, um, we find it uh, very great. And Nitesh um, has now released the first version of the front end of Balance of Satoshi. So I'm going to try it. Uh, it's nice for people who don't feel comfort uh, comfortable with the comment line. So uh, check it out. I think there, um, I don't know if it's um, for everybody to install it right now, but um, just be patient. It's coming there. So. And then Robosats. Uh, Robosats is a Lightning-based peer-to-peer exchange, Tor only, so with an Onion um, uh, link, uh, no KYC, what well, everybody likes, of course, and it uses HODL invoices to reduce fraud. And they now also added encrypted chat based on OpenPGB. And the updates, uh, not much, but uh, L&D uh, has released a release candidate for the next major version, and BTC Pay for, uh, Server has two um uh, things that changed uh, they allow users to turn on experimental features uh, for live testing before release that's nice i think it's always <laughs> the good way uh, to uh, to do it and then uh, they added a feature to export uh, the wallets uh, transactions either in csv or json format similar to invoices exports Connecti il mondo. Okay, and let's have a look at the <laughs> rings forecast. Um, yeah. yeah, let's start off with a nice uh, mention that uh, Franco, he was the ringleader in the 2 million Satoshi's 23rd ring. We, we get there in a moment, but um, 
he was the ringleader there and he was thinking about um, a solution to help with discouraging routing right before the circular balance. And I quote, I have successfully, uh, successfully experimented with settings, uh, with, a, with setting the channel policy with a min HTLC amount of half the ring size and max HTLC amount of the same, plus room for some pessimistic fees. This way, only four watts of exact the balancing amount will pass. Still not guaranteed, but makes the probability of unintended four watts very low. So obviously this is a great idea, potentially a great idea. So uh, Jury, he already um, yeah, integrated it somehow in, in, in Ring Tools because um, he made a couple of uh, updates to the bot and added this min HTLC and max HTLC in the channel policy overview. So um, that's, that's, that's great. So maybe we can build upon it or something um, because yeah, obviously we are, we are sometimes seeing some unintended routing uh, going on. Um, and then uh, we also want to thank some members because they helped and they contributed to uh, the translation of Ring Tools bots because obviously yeah, um, Jury has uh, made his bot uh, in English. Uh, but there were some translators, uh, translators uh, also Franco, Ivet, Moy, and Tardar, and they helped to translate the bot to German and to Spanish. And that's uh, obviously a very good thing yeah, if indeed. we talk about connecting the world and uh, yeah. people from different languages or uh, people that are not uh, get, um, uh, keen to speak uh, English, um, they can use it now in their own language. So, so that's great. And um, yeah, let's let's head to the the anecdotes, uh, Edward. <laughs> <laughs> ah, nice. Uh, we did a lot. <laughs> <laughs> seven rings. <laughs> yeah. We balance seven rings. So um, yeah, let me let me check if I have uh, I, I've I've um, compressed some of the um, the anecdotes a bit. So uh, okay. yeah, let's let's get it. Let's get it, uh, Edward. <laughs> um, we have the three million Satoshi's nineteenth ring. Uh, Saturday night, and we like to party. Our ring leader Ender Wigan brought some great energy and positive vibes while he was teaching himself how to balance this uh, ring using Igniter, so it was a first timer. Um, and he even gave some feedback to the master of ceremony on how to improve some stuff. So glad he is in our community. And then we have the 1 million Satoshi's 42nd ring. Happy to welcome the first participant from El Salvador, also very interesting. Nice. We had some strange issues with this ring, but this got solved by a re reboot of a couple of nodes. Unfortunately, a little too late for our initial, initial ring leader and Satoshi Radio Ring of Fighter OG Bardes to ignite, ignite the ring, but we had the amazing <laughs> Mark Ost to step in as a backup. So, um, and, and he succeeded, obviously, so great teamwork. And then the 5 million Satoshi's 20th ring, uh, when Panoram, uh, Panoramix NL took over the role of ring leader, when Astronautal was busier than he expected, this wizard was very eager to test the scripts. After he got a successful probe right, we decided to balance the ring right away. And the 500k 35, 5th ring. Um, I'll start this, oh, this was very nice. I start this ring anecdote with a quote from our ring leader, LL Slugo or me. I have no experience in this. I'm sure there's someone else better qualified for this than me. <laughs> uh, he accidentally voted on yes um, uh, uh, at the poll who wants to be our ringleader and got a bit frightened, but he underestimated himself big time because he balanced the ring and completely and completed every task easily. So he's yeah, now great. a true ringleader. So yeah, that was, let's clap, man. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> nice job. <laughs> I and always then, liked the, the, those rings. There was uh, also uh, Stepan. Uh, he is um, uh, someone I met uh, from Chaincode Labs. I was uh, yeah, that's correct. Uh, uh, wanting to mention that, and it's nice to see uh, some people there uh, with uh, more experience in Lightning. Uh, but no, uh, yeah, uh, trying out this Ring of Fire uh, yeah, concept. Yeah, so yeah. yeah. Great. And then at what we had a <laughs> 10 million Satoshi's eighth ring. So happy to announce that we balanced a high liquidity ring again. Yeah. Um, it was eighth the time. reliable L Stone again who showed his magic. We decided to put the feed rate to 100 instead of all the way down to zero to prevent routing. And it looked like this strategy works out pretty well. Thanks for your effort, L Stone. And thanks for participating to the rest of the group. And then we had the 2 million Satoshi's 23rd ring. And it was Franco again. Uh, he really uh, know how to organize a nice ceremony. He made sure everyone was ready for the party and even gave some music tips to play during the ignition <laughs> just before we wanted. And it was not um, uh, um, a ring of fire. 
uh, but it was uh, two other uh, uh, tracks, but I don't know. I, I can't remember what those tracks were, but... Um, Interesting. Not, <laughs> not Johnny Cash, uh, but I, I added Johnny Cash to that list. So uh, nice. just before we wanted to balance, we found out that one node had been offline for some time, so we needed to wait for the blockchain to sync, but luckily it was the channel between the ringleader, so gossip was fast. Great leadership, Franco. And last but not least, we had the 5, mil, 5 million Satoshi's 21st ring. And we can yeah keep, keep a very short at this time because Turbo Bus did it again, quick and painless, enough said. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> Great. <laughs> so everything's done and dusted here. And uh, thanks again, Steph. Let's go to the lightning notes. Let's do this. For the band, the battle. Make sure to secure your home network. So change default passwords and use two-factor authentication where possible. And keep your software up to date. It's also very important. Uh, please keep in mind that the whole Lightning uh, network is very experimental. Uh, software like uh, MyNode, Umbrel, Resi, Blitz, for example, and many others, and LD also, uh, are still in beta phase. Uh, don't blindly run terminal commands on your node if you don't understand uh, them yourself, and especially when prefixed with sudo. Uh, and the last one is also very important. Don't use uh, Satoshis that you're not willing to lose. So if you're not aware uh, of all security considerations, then read into it. Educate yourself, read articles, uh, ask for help in Telegram groups so, uh, with high reputation like ours, and uh, listen to podcasts and learn by doing. Otherwise, don't participate. Also, uh, you can stay uh, informed by uh, following us on Twitter. You can find us at uh, Satoshi Radio ROF. And follow our lightning leader, uh, Johnny Kiyashu. Join our Telegram group, Satoshi Radio, Ring of Fire, and Connect the World. And check our website, satoshi.radio. It would be nice for you uh, to be part of our uh, Emboss community. You can find us there on uh, Satoshi Radio. And like and subscribe uh, to our uh, YouTube channel. Use Podcasting 2.0 to listen to Connect the World. And you can uh, check uh, Sata Trading for the current value. Uh, you can find all this information, of course, also in the show notes as well. All right, let's get on to the show. Connect the builds. Welcome, Graham. <laughs> Excited to have you in our podcast at last. Yeah, how are you? Good to see you, Graham. Hey, good. Yeah, doing well. <laughs> Thanks for having me on. Good. And um, is, is Satoshi Nakamoto the second most impo uh, important person in the world history? And you obviously said yes. And uh, in your Twitter um, uh, account, I saw... Jesus and Bitcoin. That's why we came with these with the question. Um, so Jesus <laughs> is the number one most important yeah. person in in, in, history. in the history of the world, <laughs> and and Satoshi is the second one. Then right? Yeah, I mean, so yes, uh, I would say yes. Jesus number one, and then I actually I had to think about that a little bit because even for Satoshi to create what he has created, there had to be a lot of engineers ahead of him to develop the internet computing yeah. all of these things and especially you know he references adam back in the in the white paper too so um it, it's hard to say i mean i think that he, he's obviously the guy that put it all together right but there's a lot of people before him that were important as well yeah yeah that's absolutely right yep. i was uh, thinking um because you're you're from kansas uh, how's the adoption in your neighborhood uh, are there any merchants there where you can uh, yeah you can really use it not a ton um we're definitely in kansas we are less tech friendly than other parts of the world and so there's not a lot of adoption here locally uh that's going on I'm trying to make it happen as best that I can and get people on board. Uh, so I think that we have a long ways to go, though. Okay. And are you yeah. are you succeeding by um, orange billing new merchants or? Yeah, I mean it's uh, maybe less on the merchant side, just more about people getting involved um, in in the space, uh, understanding what Bitcoin is, learning about it, and so definitely you know us being headquartered here there's definitely been a lot more interest from the local community into what bitcoin is and and what it can do so i think that we're definitely succeeding in that way of getting people interested okay yeah and i um i find it interesting the uh, the answer of matrix uh, about the product market expansion uh, i've put a question in there and I was thinking about well uh, voltage has a, a a product that is completely new right um, and I thought, well, um, mm -hmm. you see a lot of uh, um, uh, companies uh, choosing market penetration and they're just all over it. 
And this is this is so this is a niche still in a niche. So uh, I find it very interesting. And you said, mm -hmm. yeah, it's risky, but you're taking the risk, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, a hundred percent. I would. I definitely think that it is risky. Just being, you know, trying to create a company in this niche of a niche, like you said, and developing, trying to build a company around the Lightning Network and all these things is is that I think starting a company is risky no matter what, and then just doing it in the space that That's we're right. in is just increasing the risk. So, uh, so I think it is. But it's you're right that it's also something that I'm so passionate about and I love doing so much that you know it's worth the risk. Cool. Exactly. That's that's exactly what uh, what is the most important uh, in in this space. So I think you're right. And I also saw a tweet yeah. that you uh, were added uh, as the fifth uh, advisor of uh, Platlab board. And I looked around it, find it very interesting. Can you elaborate what um, what they're working on there and what your role is? Yeah, so the Pleb Lab is, I think it's an early accelerator. So helping people that have ideas on Bitcoin companies or products or services, basically having ideas on how we can push Bitcoin forward. And then they just help you in whatever areas you need, whether it's technical or just advice or business, whatever kind of aspect you need, they're there to help you drive you know, your idea forward and make it better. Uh, so yeah. my role in there is just a, as an advisor. So I'm one of those people that could be a resource to the to the folks that are going through the accelerator to yep. you know answer questions be it technical investors whatever whatever it is um so just helping the people to go through the program and what Great. and what is yeah. your what's your favorite subject to help people with <laughs> um i'm i i'm technically so my history has been an engineer so i've worked as an engineer for you know my career basically so i always like to help on the engineering problems but uh, building a company and being a CEO now, I do less engineering than I used to before. It's much more <laughs> business focused. So uh, I've definitely learned a lot uh, as far as you know business goes and investors and all those things. And so I like to help people in that realm as well because you know I'm I guess I'm so fresh in learning all these things that I can I think be a good resource. Cool. Yeah. And you have a fresh perspective on things, I think also be because this is new for you, and then you encounter a lot of different things. So uh, yeah, yeah, that's a nice, um, nice way of uh, mm -hmm. working with it. Yeah. yeah, and guys, yeah, before we enter the twenty-one minutes, um, I would like to ask <laughs> Graham maybe to, um, in a nutshell, tell what Voltage is, because I think most of our listeners and viewers um, mm -hmm. already know what 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 services you provide, but I think some of them maybe not. So it's maybe good to, in in a nutshell, tell what Voltage is and what you guys are doing. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so Voltage is a Bitcoin infrastructure provider. So we help both individuals and businesses mainly uh, adopt Bitcoin into whatever their products and services are. So that usually is facilitated through Lightning Node hosting is our most popular product. But we also host things like BTC Pay Server, Bitcoin nodes. We're helping with liquidity management. Uh, we're doing monitoring. So really creating a full service platform to help you interact with the Lightning Network uh, and just help in a lot of these different areas. If you've ever you know, used the Lightning Network, there's a lot of things to know, a lot of things to figure out, a lot of new new ideas. Uh, so really just helping people figure out how to make sense of it all and give them a very easy platform to use it with. Cool. Yeah, uh, great. And uh, yeah, I really like your branding. I really like how, how the website is looking and it's, yeah, it's very fresh and Compelling and yeah, so I uh, I do like uh, everything I see on the website. It has the feel of user friendliness, right? Mm -hmm. So that's uh, I think that is really important uh, yeah. with all new uh, newcomers. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Hey, well, um, I mean, thank you. Um, we appreciate that. We just did that rebrand. Yeah. Oh, continue. Sorry. Oh, sorry. I was, I was going to say we did that. We we, we did that rebrand a couple months ago. And so, uh, you know, the previous site was, I think, the exact opposite of that, of not very user friendly. It didn't look very good. So we're very excited to be able to bring that out into the world of, you know, the fresh rebrand and a lot better UX. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you guys nailed it. Yeah. That's for sure. <laughs> hey, guys, we have um, all kinds <laughs> of questions uh, for you, uh, Graham, um, but it has to be in the 21 minutes. So uh, if you guys are ready, we would love, like to, uh, to enter that part, guys. Are you ready? Yep, yeah, I'm ready. Yeah. Let's do it. All right, let's do it. Conecta el mundo. Well, start with a, a very easy question. Well, 
Um, what was your first experience with the Lightning ne Network? And do you still know what you did at that moment? Yeah, the first time that I heard about the Lightning Network, I think it was it was, it was on the internet somewhere. I mean, just researching about you know Bitcoin and what is like kind of the next thing. How are we advancing those types of things? And when I first read about it, I actually didn't like it. I didn't think that it was a very good uh, protocol to do, you know, to to do the scaling of Bitcoin. Because I mean, when it was first created, there's a lot of limitations in what it could do. Um, payment channels were very difficult. You couldn't like do things like key send. Now you you couldn't do a lot of the things that are possible today. So that was uh, me being kind of short sighted and that thinking that this protocol doesn't solve the things that we need in the in the right ways. Well, you know, the more I researched it, the more I learned and the more that the protocol developed, I realized that it was, you know, a very beneficial protocol. It did solve a lot of these issues and it just took time for like, you know, the engineering to catch up and to develop all of these things. So uh, at, at first glance, I wasn't a big fan, but the more that I read and learned and, and watched, uh, I found out that, you know, this was a very good scaling solution. And, you know, I got obviously very excited about it from there and then started using it and, you know, developing on it. Cool. And it's a great moment in the Lightning space. There's a lot of experimentation and innovation, both on the protocol itself and on services which are built around Lightning. But what is the most promising one in your view? Yeah, I mean, you're, you're definitely right that there is a ton going on in the space of the experimentation of both the protocol implementations, things being built on it. There's just, It's a really a crazy time, which is very good to really be pushing the limits, figuring out what's possible and what's not. Um, and so I think that like people like to, there, there's a lot of things that are possible using the light network. We think about things like Sphinx chat and these Zion, all of these like, uh, and the list can go on and on about these things that are using it in an auxiliary way. But if you just think about it being the most, the best, most efficient payment network in the world, I mean, that's like, that's a several trillion dollar industry just to solve payments in a very, very good way. And so I think that just really honing in on that use case and increasing the usability and the reliability is what's important and is going to be the most the best thing to focus on in the, the near term. And then we can, you know, solve we can do a lot more with it, um, especially when you think about tar Taro and all of these new uh, innovations that are yeah. happening. There's a ton that's possible, but I think that the most immediate thing we need to solve for is just getting it very usable, very reliable. Uh, and so then we can start to scale it out into all these new ways. Yeah, so so at first working uh, towards more adoption uh, with user friendliness, and then uh, adding uh, new features, new possibilities. Yeah, and yeah, um, yeah. I mean, that's, that's basically what what I'm saying. And with that, I think that it's not to say that all of these new things of Sphinx chat and all those things are bad. I think that those are great. Like we should definitely experiment and develop things like that. It's just um, there's the getting it as a, like the, a solid payment network first is in my opinion what we need to accomplish and then we yeah, can yeah. add all these crazy things on top <laughs> yeah yeah well the next question is about well uh, some metrics in the lightning network uh, are private and uh, not possible to measure uh, so for example uh, the amount of payments uh, that are being done on the network and the volume also mm. Uh, if we want to build a stronger case uh, for more adoption of Lightning, uh, what can we um, use besides these metrics? Yeah, uh, no, that's a great question. And that's that's one of the the problems. Like Lightning Network is obviously very private in the way that it was designed, which is a very good thing. That's what we need to be developing. Um, but with that, it's very Definitely. hard to quantify a lot of the activity that's happening. When you think about you know all of the other blockchains out there, Bitcoin or otherwise, they're very public, <clears throat> excuse me, public into what they're doing and like all of the transactions that are happening on it. So you can very easily quantify the like the volume that it's doing, how much money is being transacted, how fast, all these things. With the Light Network, it's very hard to do that. You really can't. Um, all the only metrics you can see publicly are like the node count, channel count, and channel capacity. Um, and those are even bad metrics because there's nodes that can have private channels and all of these things, so they aren't advertised. So uh, with that, I think that really the, the, the metrics that do matter a lot is like those things like you mentioned of payment speed, payment uh, like uh, capacity, the volume, the number of payments. These things are the important ones uh, and they're inherently private. And so I think that uh, to really quantify I, the most public, publicly visible piece we can quantify of how well it's working 
is more about just the the usage, like I mentioned, and the the adoption of like how how much is this used across the internet or the world, and how easy is it to use? What is the UX like? And I think that that will be a big driver to increasing those transaction volumes and payments and all those things. And I think that there will be yeah. more companies, hopefully, self-reporting a little bit of like their transaction volumes and counts, and maybe it's not. Um, maybe it might be a little nuanced into like how they how they uh tell talk about it but i think that that's something that i would love to see more is more people talking about the transaction volumes that they do because that does help validate it as a payment network that we can then uh use as a case to you know talk about it into more other use cases outside of just like the bitcoin ecosystem mm -hmm. Cool. And, and at the moment, there's a lot of experimentation and development uh, and search for new use cases. If we fast forward to a time in which Lightning is regularly being used by more than, well, let's say, 50% of the world population, population, what would this look like when thinking of the abstract, abstract uh, form and function of a Lightning node? Yeah, I mean, I think that there's there's a lot that's possible uh on like inside of like lightning nodes and the things that are being developed i think that there's things like green light that allows uh for more uh maybe more modular like uh, node type setups like c lightning and things like that um, which you know kind of push the use cases into what's possible there uh so i think that it'll be it'll be very interesting to see when you think about five years out and there's also things like moon wallet and how they do their their uh transactions and kind of the architecture behind that so and i think that again we're only touching scratching the surface of what's possible like with the recent taproot upgrade and things like that i think that we're going to see increasing amounts of new things being developed so it's hard to say exactly what it looks like but i think that uh you know my hope is that it is as non-custodial as it could be and all of these UX things are still solved in a, in a nice way, being non-custodial. And I think that that's the biggest challenge here is, um, you know, solving these things in a custodial manner is fairly well understood. Solving them in a non-custodial way is harder. Uh, so that's something that we're trying to, to push for as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And um, uh, not so long ago, you talked about how a lot of people see Lightning, well, as only a solution for micropayments and in the other hand um, that liquidity services for big amounts could get very important you said that and why do you think uh, that is is it really going to be uh, that uh, that important in the near future yeah i mean I, th I think it is i think that it really so it started out it started out as a very micro payments focused network for a couple of reasons one is that it's really the only network that can do very small amounts of payments you know as efficiently as a large payment um and then secondly when it was created it was very it was kind of marked as uh risky i guess and that uh you didn't want to put a lot of funds on it so naturally people only put five ten dollars yeah. inside of their nodes back then and it was natural that you only could send a dollar at a time or something so i think for those two reasons it was kind of marked as a micropayments network which it can definitely do but there we were talking with a lot of customers that want to do more large larger payments of just you know selling miners or any anything that's just like even a couple thousand dollars that they want to be able to receive payments for over lightning and so that's definitely a new kind of shift in the liquidity uh aspect of it and so when you think about that there's obviously going to be a big need for a lot lots more liquidity larger channels more liquidity out in the network um and so things like multi-path payments also sort of sort of solve for this and that you could split up a payment it doesn't have to all go through one channel but uh, on the whole, like there's definitely going to be a need for more liquidity. And I think that it started out micropayments because of the validation. We needed to validate that this was working and it was functional. And I think that we've done that. And now we need, you know, we're going to be seeing a large increase in the need for larger channels and more capacity in the network. And I don't know if you saw it, but a couple of days ago, one of our previous guests, Carsten Otto, he managed to push to, uh, uh, 0 0.6 Bitcoin in, in a Lightning payment. Uh, so it really increases. <laughs> On testnet, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. There's, a, there's a, lot of, a lot of people pushing the boundaries like, like, like him. <laughs> yeah, there were P Picard payments uh, with uh, Rene Picard. It was very interesting. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, I mm -hmm. have another yep. question. Well, um, at, at the moment, you can only run uh, the L&D implementation of voltage nodes. Um, uh, and will there be uh, in the near future um, a, a core lightning or another distribution that, that you can use? Yes, for sure. We will definitely have core lightning and, and other implementations on, on voltage. That's definitely something that we're are striving for probably this year is to get we really ultimately want to host like every implementation and just you know let the users decide what they want to use uh core lighting is definitely the i would say the next one that is you know the most requested um so yes we'll definitely be adding more implementations more services all of those things on top of it yeah cool hey, and and well we are heading uh, towards uh the 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 voltage subject, subject now <laughs> but uh, before we uh, we want to ask you some questions mm -hmm. about voltage in our rings of fire community we noticed that self-sovereignty is very important for our members and a voltage obviously is also um, um providing lightning nodes within the cloud but is it is self-sovereignty a problem when you host uh, a uh, lightning node in the cloud Yeah, no, that's a great question. And it's, um, I mean, it's definitely, there is some trade-offs of doing it that way. And there's some trust required in running it that way. So th that's absolutely true that those exist. But I think that there's a couple important points to think about there of, you know, number one, the light network isn't consensus. So us, even if we ran 90% of the light network, we aren't changing any rules. We aren't making Bitcoin appear out of nowhere, modifying transactions, any of that <laughs> stuff. So uh, it being consensus is a very different paradigm than being a consensus layer. Uh, and then secondly, there's a, there's always going to be some form of trust involved. Even if you're running at home on an umbrella or a start nine or something like that, you probably are trusting that the code that is in that is doing what it's supposed to do. The code is open source and all those things, but I think a majority of people don't actually validate all of the code and make sure that it's running on their device and all these <laughs> things. So you're trusting you know, those companies in some way as well, the distribution channels, all those things. Um, and so I think that there's, there's yeah. obviously a spectrum of, you know, sovereignty and custodianship and trust and all of these things. And, you know, we're just, we're a spec on that spectrum. And, you know, a, a node at home is, is farther on the spectrum. Custodial is on the other side. And so I think that uh, it's, it's just something that you need to evaluate yourself. And that's something that we definitely don't discourage people running their own nodes or something like that. We like to see ourselves as almost a bridge for those people of it's easier to come onto Voltage and pay $10 to get a node spun up and start playing around with it. And then one day you want to create your own node at home on a Raspberry Pi or something, you know, you can go and do that. It's just a quicker, easier barrier to entry. And, and why, why not both? <laughs> <laughs> yeah perhaps yeah yeah, yeah. i mean D diversity right and then uh, spread it yeah yeah and there's there's definitely we've had customers that have started on like uh using a raspberry pi at home and they were trying to do like a podcasting 2.0 setup or something and then just the raspberry pi was not yeah. reliable enough to actually use for that use case so then they came to voltage and they have a node at home that is their own node and then they have their like apps that uh run on voltage so we're really targeting kind of the developers and businesses to make, you know, the production grade system for running nodes. And so I think that, you know, if you're trying to do anything like that, it, it makes sense to run a node at home and then run a node on voltage. Yeah. 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 And I think also, well, privacy, uh, like you mentioned before, uh, is also a reason to, uh, to have m uh, multiple nodes, right? Because then, then you can hide your liquidity or spread it more evenly. Uh, so perhaps that's also a possibility. But um, the creator side of it, like you just mentioned, is um, is indeed um, a nice solution. And um, Steph, uh, Sevi, we talked with Severin Bueller, and uh, he's a digital nomad. So, of course, he has a note in the cloud. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's for sure, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hey, and uh, you mentioned not so long ago that adding uh, 100 extra nodes to Voltage would not make a big difference, but more Lightning payments are. So infrastructure is one thing, but how do we introduce Lightning to as many people as possible in the near future? Yeah, yeah, you know, I, I know the comment that you're talking about, and it's, uh, I guess the, the reason for that was that like, just adding nodes to the network doesn't increase usage. And so we really need to solve those UX problems. And I think that doing that is gonna drive the, the adoption further. And maybe it's maybe today there's some custodial things that can you know be improved upon to get more people on board, and then you know as they learn more about Bitcoin and Lightning, they move into their own 
you know, maybe voltage node, maybe node at home, whatever it is. Um, so I think that right now to get more and more people on board, we need to solve more of the UX, you know, hurdles. And that's not only like, um, you know, not just payments and all those things, but, you know, if someone's trying to run a node, like the channel management and all of the pieces that come with actually running a node, um, I think that that's the things that we need to be optimizing for to really increase the usage. Yeah. Um, and then I think once we have more, I think the biggest, the bigger thing is getting people to accept it or add it to their platform or whatever it is. So getting more of the merchant adoption or people, the developers on board. And then once that is there, I feel like the consumer and the people that want to use it or interact with it from that side will come and that will increase over time as well. Yeah, yeah. And um, Voltage is offering enterprise-grade infrastructure to run a Lightning node in the cloud. And uh, for which people um, are your services most suitable? We talked about it a little bit, but um, you have some uh, differences between developers or uh, businesses, of course, with B2C Pay. Perhaps you can elaborate a little bit. Yeah, um, the you know our services are definitely kind of tailored to the larger scale, like like you said, like enterprise level uh, people that are trying to interact with Lightning. And I think that that even uh, the the systems that we build are also great for you know just the developer that's trying to create an application. Um, we're really focused on you know high uptime, making sure your node is fast, efficient, all of those things. And so that really focuses yeah. us on more of the the larger scale companies that really need help understanding what lightning is and running these nodes in a good way um, because that's there there's so many nuances to the network of not only understanding what a node is what a channel is all of these things like okay how do you run them efficiently so you're getting fast payments and all of these things and so there's a lot to understand there and we're definitely trying to help those businesses along the way and uh you, we're, we're just increasing our 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 ability to help them in a lot of different ways um so that's definitely the end that we focus more on and then, like we said, we have some we have some nodes and services that are intentionally focused on the individuals, and that's really just to trying to help the network benefit those people that need you know just a quick and easy way to get started. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and what are the main difference, differences in software between running a node at home and running it at Voltage? Yeah. Um, so when you when you run it at home, you're you're in charge of everything, which is good and bad. You know, you have you're in charge of your all of your channels and your backups and the uh, Raspberry Pi, your power backups. Power is a very big thing. If you lose power, your database could get corrupted and all these things. So you are fully responsible for everything, which means that you are more sovereign. You have more you know independence. Uh, but there's also a lot there that you have to maintain. With Voltage, it's a little bit less where. You don't have to worry about your backups, your networking, all of the things that uh, are you have to worry about when running a node. And then we also we do the backups. We do the 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 making sure your disk is fast enough to process the lots of payments and all these things. So um, you have to definitely worry about less. You are trusting Voltage to take care of more of those underlying you know networking and all of those things where you don't have to trust anyone if you're running it at home. But that also comes with the support burden of making sure that all of these things are functional and not uh, gonna, you're not gonna lose your money because something went wrong there. No, no. And um, we spoke to Carson Otto in episode 21 and asked him uh, about whether uh, migration uh, from a solution on premise uh, to the cloud-based service to lower costs of IT hardware maintenance and security is a myth. Um, do you also think it's a myth? Um, and if not, what are the main benefits of infrastructure services in the cloud uh, versus costs? Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's that's a it's a hard it's a hard thing because like you know when you're paying for hardware in your house, you usually have a large upfront cost, and then if that can last you many years, it's probably cheaper. But if it's only lasting you six months or something, it might be more expensive. So it, it's hard to actually quantify that in a, in a real way, especially when you're thinking about Raspberry Pis and stuff. Um, but then also, like I kind of mentioned, you get a big trade. The big trade off in going to a cloud based solution is, you know, much easier maintainability updates, all of the things that you have to worry about when when running a node or you know software at all. And so I think that it, there's obviously a human element to it of like your time of managing the stuff and the cloud obviously uh, makes your time much. You, know, you have to devote less time to it. 
where at home you might yeah. save a few bucks, but you have to spend more time. And so it's, it's, it, it, I think it's a very, when we think about especially running lightning nodes, it's very, a very individual cost, you know, cost uh, analysis for you to do where how much do you value your own time and how much do you want to get involved in the nitty gritty details of raspberry Pis and things like that. And so uh, it's, so I, I don't have a great qu answer of like, is it a myth or not? I think it just depends on you as a person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I think you're right. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Graham, you already convinced me that I should run a, a, a node at Voltage, but I, I still have a question for you. Uh, the, the Voltage platform <laughs> is chasing the game again. Uh, the next iteration of Voltage will be the most powerful Lightning platform ever. Incredible scalable nodes, robust APIs, extensive developer tools, no maintenance, and much more. What is next generation Lightning? Yep, sure. So that's really, uh, that's it's our iteration of our platform, I could say. So what we're doing is we're just really taking a lot of the lessons that we've learned over running nodes for the last year and a half and just fixing fixing the bad, enhancing the good, all those things. So we'll have more liquidity management, more uh, developer tools, all those things on the site. So it'll be way more extensible and uh, solving a lot more problems for you than, than what is currently possible. So, you know, the goal is to just have a, a uh, like a stripe based model of of creating nodes so you can have your own node that is non-custodial and being able to just connect into it from anywhere and really just make it very simple to use so if you can kind of condense it down just making a very easy to use platform that still gives you all of the enhancements that you can get from running your own node and being in control of all of your your funds and, and channels and things like that Great. Cool. That's a real nice uh, ending, I think, <laughs> and a summary of uh, of your uh, the product uh, Voltage is um, is uh, uh, having. So yeah, yeah thanks. <laughs> thanks, Ray. Um, yeah, yeah, we failed to get all the answers uh, to a, a, a whole bunch of questions that I see in front of my face. But uh, <laughs> let's do it another time. If you're up to it, uh, we would really like that. So yeah, uh, we, I think time, we, we uh, should try the new platform that yeah. I brought, and then we can uh, ask of course, him again, of course. and then we can ask him all kinds yeah. of questions about the platform, right? <laughs> yeah, indeed. <laughs> yeah, definitely. No, that sounds great. Tilt it well. So um, yeah, we still have one question left for you, uh, Graham. Actually, um, last week we had El Professor. And we asked El Professor, he is obviously the um, um, community leader of the Latinodos community. Um, we asked him uh, to come up with the question, Edward will play the audio file and then you may answer it. Here it comes. <laughs> well, um, yeah, first, um, yeah, congratulations for, for what Voltage is doing. A uh, big fan of the, of the blog posts and the, the reports shared there. Um, so yeah, my question has to do with what can, not, not what, but when can we uh, expect uh, low or no code solutions for developing Lightning services. And, and I asked it because, uh, yeah, maybe not every small or medium sized company will have the budget to hire, uh, to hire a, a Bitcoin or Lightning developer. So, so yeah, when, when, when no or low code solutions. Yeah. Uh, no, that's, so that's a great question. Um, and what, so. Uh, soon is what I want to say, uh, because this is definitely something that we're, we're <laughs> focused on because like, just like, just like they said, uh, lightning and Bitcoin developers are getting increasingly hard to find. I mean, there's, they're in high demand and it's hard to actually get someone that's competent and all of those things to, you know, to work on your platform. Cause there's just, there's just not enough of them. So we need more, uh, for one, but, uh, then I think that this is definitely something that we're focused on of. We we hear we talk with a lot of people that want to adopt Lightning because they hear that it's just a superior payments network, but they don't understand all of the nuance that goes with it of the channels and and all of these things. And so that's what we're working on doing is making it so more automation just across the board. So automating channels, nodes, all of these things, um, which definitely pushes us towards a low no code solution. And then additionally with the things that you know we're developing out with those robust APIs and making it easier to interact with the platform, um, I think we'll get very, very close to that. And that will really push us into this world where you, you can you can interact with the Lightning Network, you know, very similar to how you interact with any other platform or developer experience, but you still you know, have control of your funds. You can still send and receive Lightning Bitcoin natively. And so uh, we're definitely pushing towards that. 
That being said, it's a very difficult problem to solve uh, in a good way. And so, you know, it might take a little while to get to that complete no code solution, but it's definitely something that we're optimizing for. Nice. Interesting. Yeah, because I think like just what you said before with the next generation um, and, and I was visualizing it. Well, uh, if all nodes are working this efficiently, then we uh, really are uh, very close. It's getting us very close to, um, yeah, to, to, to make this, this backbone. Uh, of uh, of lightning nodes yeah no great and um next time we have a new guest it's uh, adam curry and he's called the podfather and is responsible together with dave jones for the podcast index uh, we also want him to um, answer a question from you uh, which question can we ask him for you yeah, sure. Uh, hey, Adam, uh, congrats on everything that you've been doing on Podcast Index. Um, so what, what I would love to hear Adam answer is, what do we need to do to make Bitcoin and Lightning be used by billions of people? I think that Adam has started getting us there, but I'm very curious what it is that we need to take it to the next step and get lo billions of people on board. Oh. That's a nice one. <laughs> Pushing uh, the bar, right? <laughs> <laughs> With his 4 million uh, mm -hmm. yeah. um, podcast, which he has. And, and, inter so, and yeah. integrate that idea into Voltage, <laughs> of course. <laughs> of course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, great. Connecting the world. Thanks. Well, thanks again for being in the show, Graham. And um, yeah, we uh, like we said before, we would really love to see you again uh, one time. Thanks a lot, uh, Graham. And um, yes. yeah, I would like to ask you, where can people follow you? Can you maybe uh, tell us your, your Twitter uh, handle or maybe if they're uh, interested, the website, yeah. the full touch, or where can people follow you? Yeah, for sure. I mean, thanks for having me on, guys. I definitely would love to come back and, uh, and, and do this again. Um, for You can find me on Twitter at, at G Krizek, so it's G K R I Z E K. And our Voltage Twitter is Voltage underscore cloud. And then our, our website is voltage.cloud. So check us out, uh, go create a node, check out the platform. Um, and you know, we're here with any questions. Great, thanks. And thanks for listening. Uh, and thanks for all members participating in Satoshi Radio, uh, Rings of Fire. And of course, thanks to everyone helping us to connect the world uh, with each other. And if you like our content, please support us in our mission. Uh, visit our website connecttheworld.live uh, where you can uh, donate of course with your favorite uh, platform your um, podcasting 2.0 subscribe and share our content there and uh, we need you to complete our mission uh, connect the world so keep those notes running uh, sets flowing and rings burning and see you all next week with adam curry on this same lightning channel uh Oudmon, uh, graham hey, yo, <laughs> thanks uh thanks a lot for having me have a good day